Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is brought to you by the Friends in Recovery community, a thriving network of individuals who are fighting back against the stigma of addiction. Join our hosts as they speak up about the real issues of addiction, treatment, and recovery. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, here are your friends in recovery. Hey guys, Jersey Ed here from Friends in Recovery Podcast, and I'm running solo today, and I'll be running solo for a while. Um, The Podfather is not here today. He will be um, handling our... um, our show, um, Answering the Call. If some of you who are first responders, you guys might have heard of our Answering the Call. If not, that's where he's at. He didn't leave the Friends and Recovery community. He just went over to the show, um, um, Answering the Call, and uh, he's going to kind of take that show over. So it's me today. I got a great guest, Lauren Jimerson. Um, I'll get into that, get, get into her in a minute. I'll tell you where I met her. She's a great, great person. I'm really excited for this interview. Um, you know, she, her and I have a lot in common, recovery being the biggest thing. Um, <laughs> a couple other things that we have in common too. But real quick, um, don't forget, um, I'm looking for everybody to send um, me your sober dates. Email me your sober dates to fr- um, help at Friends and Recovery Podcast. That's help at Friends and Recovery Podcast.com. And make sure. Um, that you put your sober date and your name and your last initial, and I'll read them on the air at the end of the month. Um, we are giving two cups away. We're giving two friends in recovery cups away. And here's Carl to show us what those cups are. Thank you, Carl. And uh, those th- we're going to give two cups away at the end of the month, and we might do it again next month. Um, there's a high demand for these cups. So remember, help at friendsandrecoverypodcast.com is where you want to send it. We may also like us on Facebook, Instagram, and all that stuff. So that's all the stuff out of the way. So I like to um, bring on Lauren Jimerson. Uh, Lauren is uh, a long-term friend of mine. Well, about a year now. <laughs> and um, She's in recovery. And her, her and I met in a uh, coaching course that we took, uh, Journey, um, the, the Journey Intensive Coaching Course. And I'm telling you, I had a blast in this in this course every Sunday at um at noontime at your east coast too right lauren yeah so every sunday uh, her and i would be on along with 25 other of our great friends and here's how how crazy things are is that um i'm in this room and i don't know anybody in this room and eventually lauren and i get to know each other and we tell each other we're in recovery like that's so crazy so i, I had to, i had to have her on the show and and you know you just don't know where you're going to meet somebody in recovery you know my higher power puts people in in the in in places for me for a reason you know what i mean mm. and, and lauren was one of those reasons so lauren welcome to the show um give us a little bit of value tell us tell us you know what what you hear <laughs> yeah um well thanks for um having me on your show um and i was just thinking about um I think like one of the first assignments that we had to pair up, you mm. ended up being my partner and that's yeah. where we, where that happened. But I remember, um, you saying, um, you know, I told you I was a therapist and you're yeah. like, oh, I hope she's not a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. I remember that. And then you yeah. were in recovery. I was like, oh my God, it's like, this is crazy. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. I remember that. Yeah. We, we got paired up together. So yeah. What, um, what, what, tell us a little about your life. Why, you know, what kind of, uh, how it, how, how it began and why, you know, what, why you got into recovery and, um, mm-hmm. you know, maybe some of the, you know, some of the trials and tribulations along the way. Yeah. Um, well, I, um, was born and raised on the Cattaraugus Indian reservation, um, which is in Western New York, um, near Buffalo, New York, um, Closer to Fredonia, New York, um, people tend to know where that is because there's a college there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little college town. Yes. Um, so yeah, so you know, um, being Native American, there's higher you know substance and alcohol use rates. Um, so that you know that was a part of my life growing up, um, and you know, so I, I you know I saw a lot of um, use happening. 
And, you know, when I was young, like I swore, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like that, you know? Um, but then when I, you know, got into my teenage years, um, you know, that's when it started, you know, smoking weed, mm. um, drinking and, you know, just like fell into it. Um, so when I was, um, 16, I had my son and that just, it changed things. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, of course, you know, I went sober when I was pregnant with him, um, and then continued until he was like a year old and then I fell off the wagon. So I had like periods of sobriety, but, um, I didn't really get like super serious about it until, um, I wrote my master's thesis in 2015. Um, I was going for my master's in art therapy. Mm -hmm. And so I did, um, research on, um, trauma. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to know like the, um, the connection with trauma and, you know, substance use. Um, and there's an aspect for, um, Native Americans specifically, um, for concerning historical trauma. Um, and that, you know, and that's kind of complex too. Um, so I started to learn these things and I did a project, um, when I first, when I first wrote my, um, my thesis project, it was to be a group project with like, um, I wanted to recruit students and young people. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I was interested in working with young people and do a group uh, creating a digital narrative based on substance use. Mm -hmm. And so I put out flyers. Um, my supervisor at my internship was actually the one that helped me with the idea. Um, and, you know, she contacted people that she thought would be uh, good for the project and nobody answered. It was like crickets. <laughs> <laughs> so in, um, in college, right in college, who's going to answer that one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, all right. And then, um, so one of my classmates was like, well, you could do a heuristic self study. And I was like, fuck that <laughs> no way you didn't even want to answer it <laughs> i i know and i was like all right and it's two days later um you know i thought about it slept on it and i was like well i have to have a project you know i did all this uh, all this research and all this stuff and you know maybe she's right and so that's what i did was a heuristic self-study and created my own um digital narrative wow and um yeah and so I did research on storytelling, um, narrative therapy, um, and kind of put everything together to use like this new um, media. Mm. And, you know, and I had experience um, doing filmmaking as new media in my undergrad wow. um, art studies. So, um, so I have this video and I had, I journaled with it. Um, it was, it was tough. <laughs> it was really tough. Um, but then well, but it really solidified my sobriety. Yeah, that's going to ask you, were you sober? Or were you thinking about being sober? Or were you dabbling in sobriety while this was going on? Or were you full fledged? Yeah, I'm in this type. So yeah, project. Yeah. So like, you know, I had had like a couple of like, you know, so sober stints. Um, okay. And I think the one before that, you know, was when my drinking got really bad. And so, you know, I, and I, I you know, I know why I fell off the wagon and I understood it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was using it as coping as, yeah. and I just monitored it until, you know, I thought, you know, I could handle, you know, being sober again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I was kind of getting to that point. Um, I really wasn't like drinking so much, um, but my drinking would get bad to like when I would drink, I would black out. Mm. Um, so it wasn't like the frequency, it mm. was the amount that I was drinking. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so did this project help you um, kind of strengthen your recovery then it sounds like? Yeah. Um, yeah, because you know, it was like, it was just, it's so powerful and when I show my video to people, you know, especially like, you know, other natives, um, mm -hmm. 
you know, they're like, I relate so much to your story. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. So, um, cause you know, when, when I, when my son was, um, four months old, we actually moved off the reservation and, you know, we live like two hours away from my reservation now and in Rochester. And, you know, so he's, he's grown up here. Um, I have another son too. Mm -hmm. And so in this, it's like a eight or nine minute video. Okay. And um, I used um, imagery, I used um, text, and I used music to tell the story. Okay. And um, so, you know, I talked about like my childhood, what it was like, um, you know, growing up in a household where there was al alcohol and substance use, mm -hmm. there was also domestic violence happening. Mm -hmm um you know and, and like what you know what that was like for me mm -hmm. and you know like growing up being a teenager partying um you know and then you know i got pregnant had my son and then moving away mm -hmm. um and trying to um be in a relationship i was trying to have a family and i, I ended up being in a relationship with um you know another person who was using mm -hmm. and it didn't work out mm -hmm. it really um, doesn't, yeah yeah lauren um I, I you touched a little bit on your family but if you can touch a little bit on your family life um and how that might have impact um on your the route that you took in your life good you know the the recovery life and and the and the the the, the drunk life or the using life um if you if you don't mind if you don't mind yeah <laughs> excuse me um yeah so I don't know, like, it's weird, like growing up and, you know, part of like, um, the lifestyle back home, you know, like we, we party on the weekends mm -hmm. and that's when everybody sees each other. And, you know, and that's how like our relationships are formed mm -hmm. and we get to know each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, so there are certain family members that I got to know better that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and but then you know of course like um not drinking anymore i'm not you know hanging out like i did and um so you know of course there's that part where like you get sober and then you don't have friends um mm. you know you have to find new friends yeah. sober friends yeah <laughs> they gotta be boring sober friends right <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so, um, but I, you know, I, I do have like family members that were, um, have sobriety, you know, like 20, 30, 40 years. Mm, wow. Yeah. So, you know, of course those are the people that, you know, I started to hang out with more mm -hmm. and, and learn, you know, learn things. And, you know, I, I didn't, and I, you know, I didn't want my kids to know me. Mm -hmm. in that way um mm -hmm. so when they were little um you know younger and i was drinking like you know i would keep that away from them mm -hmm. um so they they didn't you know they didn't know me when i was drinking like they didn't know what it was like mm -hmm. um and I don't, I don't think they even knew that i drank and like smoked <laughs> cigarettes <laughs> That's not our mom. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because um, we do um, two 12, the Friends in Recovery, we do two 12 step meetings daily, seven and noon, um, 7 p.m. and noon Eastern time, seven days a week. Um, and if you want to schedule, guys, go to genesishouse.net. That's genesishouse.net. And the schedule will be there. Selfless plug, sorry, but um, <laughs> uh, and, and go under connections and the schedules will be there. So um, if you guys want to join our meetings, but um but we do we do the the two meetings um a day and and i listen to i because it's zoom because it's all zoom now that you know all our my, most of my meetings are zoom i listen to stories all the time and i can't believe like what some people say like i look at you know i look at you I'm like that's not the lauren i know you know i look at some of these people in the meeting like you did what? You robbed a bank? You, a little old lady? You know, <laughs> hey, come on, you know. Um, just exaggerating on that one, but but it's amazing. Like when we're not in recovery, and versus when we're recovery, the two different lives that we lead. You know, anywhere where we lived. You know, so um, yeah. I got a I got a question about um, Native Americans. Okay, mm -hmm. I did a lot of work with Native Americans in Alaska, in the New England area, and some some in Florida. Not a lot, but enough to understand the culture is definitely um 
um, so, uh, definitely an, an addictive, I don't want to say an addictive culture, but they, they're prone to addiction. Is that, is that, is that correct to say is, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's the, the right word to say, but there was a lot of addiction in the native American communities that I worked with through, you know, throughout the years. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and, and, and what maybe um, why that might be, you know, um, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've always wondered why is it the native Americans so mm -hmm. saturated with alcohol and, and all these problems like this, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's actually what led me to, um, my research in grad school oh, okay. is, you know, I was so curious about, um, you know, like behavioral patterns and mm -hmm. you know what, you know, um, and so what i found um well i started I, I started um on the trail of researching holocaust survivors um because okay. there's a lot of um similarities mm -hmm. um and it led me to um this article written by maria bravehorse yellow yellow heart <laughs> she's got a, a big name um <laughs> and i think i i want to say this article was written in the 80s uh -huh. um and so she um used this term historical trauma mm. um and so you know and it, it it's like um there's cultural trauma um intergenerational trauma and so then we term this you know historical trauma when it kind of like comes together okay um so throughout the history of you know the united states of course um is the domination and colonization of native americans um so through the history of assimilation um you know my ancestors were told it, you know you're uncivilized you're savage it's not okay to be you and then um you know so there's this whole you know, trying to ex exterminate us, you know, like committing genocide. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and that that changes that kind that trauma actually changes the chemistry in the body. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes genetic, Ooh. and it can be passed on to your children. Okay, okay. So yeah, so I'm carrying the trauma of my ancestors. Okay. Um, I think what i'd say is the biggest impact is um you know and this is kind of being talked about a lot now is the um, residential schools okay um up in canada um in um there was they found um the a mass grave at one of these industrial schools um in kamloops and they found the bodies of 215 children oh my god yeah wow yeah so that speaks to what kind of abuse was happening yeah um the first one started in america um in carlisle pennsylvania mm -hmm. um so in the 1800s um i can't quite remember the year right now um but it opened and the um the objective was to kill the indian to save the man oh my god yeah, so they would take kids from their families and their homes and put them in these um, schools. And um, some children, um, you know, were taken at such a young age. Um, you know, like I know someone who was taken when they were two years old mm. and they were there for 11 years. Mm. And so, you know, so they, you know, they would, um, you know, we have um, pride and long hair. And so they mm. cut the hair off um change no. their traditional regalia to you know wear um you know what we call white man clothes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so you know it's um you know just really trying to change the identity mm -hmm. um and you know of course like doing our ceremonial practices and speaking our language as was illegal oh my god Oh yeah. God. So, so I understand the correlation between the Holocaust and you know, and 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 the Native Americans. Now, I never understood that. And this, um, 
the uh, historic, the historical trauma. Is that what you call it? Historical trauma. I can yeah. see how that's passed along. I mean, that's that's almost bred into a human being just being yeah. around that. You know, that's yeah. I've never never understood that. So in turn, this is where that the the huge alcohol problem comes from because they're not getting the proper care. They're not getting the proper um, mental health help um, to deal with. Maybe let's fix this problem instead of let everybody drink about it. Correct. Yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. a technical terms about it, but I'm Jersey Ed, so I really don't know the technical <laughs> stuff. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you know, alcohol use is a, a coping mechanism, right? Yeah. Yep. And um, I just watched this documentary on Gabor Mate. Um, oh, yeah. Have you ever? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Read his work. Um, so yeah. So um, you know, he he was saying that you know. Um, if you look beyond like substance use, you'll find that, you know, usually there's trauma mm -hmm. in there. And so substance use is a coping mechanism for trauma because, you know, if you have, if you have PTSD, mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to be present in the moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's just always this like, um, need to escape. Um, so of course, like drugs are a fucking wonderful way <laughs> to escape reality, oh, yeah, you know, what's yeah. going on right now. Yeah. yeah. The problem with drugs and alcohol is that you're going to come back to reality. That's the problem. And right. we know if we don't get to the core of the issue, like recovery, trauma therapy, uh, whatever it takes to, um, you know, kind of get us out of that, that mindset and bring us into this new mindset. Listen, we can't change the past. We we can only make it better. We can only you know make it better for ourselves from here. And I've I've noticed that's what you did in your life. You made it better. You took initiative to make your life better by staying sober, um, mm -hmm. raising two wonderful kids. I'm sure I don't know them, but I'm sure they're wonderful because I know you. So they got to be. Um, yeah. And also taking this journey course that you and I that you and I took. So you're always trying, you're still, you're still in, in, in the course, you're still taking another course. So you're always trying to improve yourself, always trying to, you know, that's one thing I noticed about you when we were in our classes that you were always, you know, trying to learn and understand and, and be in, be in the moment you were saying, I'm, I, uh, it's very hard to be in a moment with, with trauma because you have to, I guess you're reliving it. I don't have any trauma per se. Um, I, I believe everybody has a little bit of trauma in their lives, but, um, probably I don't have anything that, that ever crazy happened to me on top of historical trauma. You know what I mean? Um, so, but let me ask you this. Um, what about your life now? Like we just, you know, I kind of just gave a little bit about it, but how's it going? Where is it going? Which direction do you want to do? To, you know, because you're sober, because you're getting over all this trauma, because you're working on self, where do you see your life going and where is it and all that good stuff? Yeah. Um, so I, um, I think that my motivation is, um, decolonizing therapy. Um, so, um, I haven't, um, gotten my license, you know, I'm not a licensed therapist yet. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm working towards getting licensed. Um, and I would, you know, my my major goal is to um open a wellness center mm. um you know that utilizes um fitness and nutrition mm -hmm. um as a means to um help with mental health disorders including substance use mm -hmm. um so we ha we ha we have some a place in rochester that's similar it's called rock Recovery fitness oh oh yeah i heard of them yeah yeah. yeah so they're they're based on phoenix rising yeah uh, i think in they're in colorado they're they're yeah that phoenix rise I believe is out west somewhere i think you're right yes yeah yeah so yeah rock recovery fitness is based on what they're doing at phoenix rising okay um so but you know i i, I you know i want to incorporate um different kinds of services to help people recover from trauma mm -hmm. um mostly trauma um but i think certainly you know like um other mental health disorders you know can be um helped through you know like the programming that you know i'd like to do yeah yeah absolutely um so for 
our, we're going to wrap up here in a second, but for our, our, our audiences, there are our, our listeners that are, that are listening, I guess that's the right word. I don't know. <laughs> what, any, any, anything that you would say to them, um, especially maybe, maybe even the native American group. Um, I don't know what our native American population is listening to this, but even if there's one, maybe there's one person out there, even whatever the population is, if, if, what would you say to somebody if they're deciding they should be sober, they shouldn't be sober? Um, what, what's what's that turning point maybe in your life that turned you around to do this? Um, well, I think that um, getting sober um, wasn't easy. Mm. Um, you know, I, I had several tries at it. Um, I don't think it's ever perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and... I have to say that like the pandemic really did challenge my sobriety. Um, cause I think I just celebrated six years. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. And, you know, and, and, um, I had a friend that tell me, told me that she's been sober for, I think over 20 years. And she said, you know, those big, those big ones, like the five year, 10 year, 15 years, she said, you know, something big happens. And I'm like, what the fuck? And, you know, and then so it's like, you know, figuring out like, you know, like new systems, new coping mechanisms. Um, and I definitely had that happening this year, um, mm -hmm. you know, because I went through some things and I was just like, how did I, you know, I've been through stuff. Like, how did I get through it before? Mm -hmm. And I realized, oh, my God, it's because I drink. Um, so, you know, like reassessing how I was coping, um, you know, so it's, it's not easy, but I think it's a commitment that's, um, so worthy. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for my sobriety. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that 100%. And, you know, I like what you said, getting sober wasn't easy and it's not easy. You know, it gets easier. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I can honestly, and, and I have to agree with that. It's, it's life is, life is challenging, you know, but we can do it sober today. You know, life is, life is grueling, you know, the pandemic I put everybody through a, a loop, you know, and uh, try, tried everybody's, I'm surprised, I guess on some level, because here's the thing, all of us used to go over, so used to go in meetings, boom, one day meetings closed. What do you do? Yeah. You know, where do, where do I get my sobriety from now? You know, I got my sobriety from my meetings, but, you know, obviously the sponsor, but then the Zoom meetings popped up and life was yeah. good. But um, yeah, so, so yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, you know, it, it's just, uh, it's been, been a pleasure talking to you about um, your culture, your, your life, your, your way you're going now and the things you're kind of, kind of doing. Is there a website or a email or something that if anybody wants to learn more about you and, and are, are you doing life coaching now also? And, and if they, if yes, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, actually I do have a website. It's called goodmindcoaching.com. Um, I am on Instagram at goodmindcoaching. Um, it's, it's goodmind underscore coaching on Instagram. Um, and I'm working on putting together a Facebook group too. Cool. Okay, um, good, good. So, yeah. so goodmindcoaching.com. That's yeah. where you can find Lauren Jimerson at. Um, give her a shout. Let her know you've seen this podcast. Probably one of the best podcasts I've ever done because <laughs> of Lauren. <laughs> uh, but a little different this time. A little uh, sorry if it seemed a little shaky at the beginning. I just uh, kind of getting this thing going. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll get comments like, where's the Podfather? What happened to Podfather? Podfather's still around, guys. Don't worry about it. So, um, and real quick before we go, I want to give a quick shout out to Sober Pod over on the left coast, guys. Hello. Um, we 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 have a kind of a friendly rivalry rivalry going back and forth. So I they mention us, I mention them. They always say something different about us. I don't say anything different about them, but I have Lauren Jimerson on my show, Sober Pod. You don't, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lauren, thank you so much. And uh um, I'm sure you'll probably get in some emails. Um and, awesome. and reaching out so yeah, well thank everybody you. thank you so much for listening um at jersey ed here and stay sober everybody 
This concludes this episode of Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast. Follow us on Facebook for past shows and updates and enjoy free access to twice daily support meetings. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Since 1992, Genesis House has been helping real people heal from addiction on their private recovery campus in beautiful Palm Beach County, Florida. Their family-owned program is accredited by the Joint Commission and offers detox and dual diagnosis treatment in a comfortable and confidential setting. At Genesis House, they focus on treating the underlying causes of addiction. Their comprehensive approach includes psychiatric care, individual and small group therapy, trauma healing techniques, and holistic care including yoga, massage, and animal-assisted therapy. After treatment, their clients enjoy the lifelong support of a nationwide network of Genesis House alumni. Call Genesis House today at 1-800-737-0933 to speak with someone who understands. Visit them on the web at www.genesishouse.net. It's time to start your journey to a long and successful recovery.